What's going on guys, Tyler here, and today I have the Everly Well Food Sensitivity Test. Uh, so what this test is supposedly going to do is show me which foods I have sensitivities to based on my body's immune response to those foods. Then ideally, I'll be able to eliminate those foods from my diet so I just feel better, less fatigued, less anxious, etc., on a daily basis. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna have my complete Everly Well review. Uh, we're gonna unbox this together to see what it looks like, and then I'm gonna make some predictions of my own about foods that I believe I'm gonna show sensitivities to uh, because there's some things that I know when I eat them I feel a little bit off so we'll see if I'm right or not uh, and we'll go over the review results together and uh, see if this is a good purchase for you guys now the last thing I want to do is hold you guys hostage but as soon as I mail these samples in I am going to reach out to the manufacturer to try to get a coupon code for you guys my audience uh, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video to get that coupon code which will hopefully give you a nice percentage off your total order cost if you decide to buy the Everly Well test yourself. Now you guys know this channel is all about mental health issues and anxiety, so you're probably wondering why I'm doing an Everly Well review in the first place. But the thing is, food sensitivities can sneak up on us, causing that immune response, which is gonna cause inflammation throughout the body. Now this can cause different issues that you might already be expecting, like headaches, gastrointestinal issues, or fatigue, but it can also cause a wide variety of mental health issues like anxiety, depression, etc. So it's really important that we identify any possible root causes of these issues, and oftentimes it can be food sensitivities. In fact, the gut is so important to our mental health that it's often referred to as the second brain. Uh, this is because when things are out of whack in our stomach or throughout our gastrointestinal system, this can cause issues like anxiety or depression. Now, some of you guys might be watching this and thinking, I don't need to do this test because I don't have any food sensitivities, but uh, actually inflammation and food sensitivities can be a little bit sneakier than that because we're creatures of habit and even though we should have a varied diet, most of us eat a about the same things on a pretty regular basis. So if you're having something like dairy products every single day, uh, it might be difficult for you to actually notice the negative impact that it's having on your health, on your anxiety levels, on that inflammation throughout your body, because you've gotten used to this baseline that's lower than what it could be. Uh, whereas if you were to eliminate those foods that you're sensitive to from your diet, then now all of a sudden you might realize a positive impact once that's cut out. And if you go back to consuming those foods, you realize, oh wow, they do make me feel bad. So just be mindful of that. There may be food sensitivities that you don't realize you have and you won't be aware of until you actually cut them out of your diet and realize how much better you feel without them. I'm sure you guys are getting tired of hearing me talk. Let's open this bad boy up. Whoops, there we go. Instructions, don't need those. What's in here? Okay, this is I guess where you do the little blood drops. And here's some prickers, lancets, and a band-aid, and alcohol stuff. Great! And to ship it back. Cool! <laughs> there we go. So the instructions seem pretty straightforward. Basically, I'm gonna prick my finger with this little lancet here, and then I'm gonna drop little droplets of my blood onto this. Now, since this is an anxiety channel, I don't think most of you guys are probably gonna wanna watch me bleed onto a piece of paper. So let's just skip forward a little bit and assume that I've done this the way the instructions say to do it. All right, now that I've taken my sample and I'm mailing it in to get the results, I guess we just have to wait a couple of weeks to see what Everly Well says about my food sensitivities. However, in the meantime, I do wanna put in a couple of best guesses, uh, things that I expect to see, and I could be way off base here, uh, but there's only really two things I've noticed personally that I've been, what I believe, sensitive to, uh, and that's dairy and I guess you'd say enriched white flour, whatever whatever that main ingredient is in frozen pizza, because I've noticed anytime I have like a big frozen pizza to myself, don't judge me, anytime I have a big frozen pizza or something to myself, I'll just feel like generally more anxious than usual, which is atypical for me at this stage of my life. Um, so I wanna see what the test says about that, uh, if it de detects any kind of wheat or something like that. I, I don't know, it, I'm being kind of general, I realize that, but I don't know what it would be. Uh, enriched wheat flour, white flour, whatever it is, is the, is the top ingredient that I notice all the time makes me feel anxious. And then the other one is uh, dairy. 
uh, because I've noticed just gastrointestinal discomfort or having uh, like dairy products before bed will make the quality of my sleep a lot worse and I'll be waking up with sleep anxiety and, and just not feeling very well. Uh, so we'll see what the test says because I really have no idea if I'm gonna be way off base or if there's gonna be some truth to either of those predictions, but we'll see. Uh, for now, I guess we just have to wait. All right, so just a few days after mailing my kit in, I actually got the results emailed back to me, uh, and we're gonna go over those together. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here, but I just wanna point out first that the kit, the test that I did was there, the Everlywell uh, comprehensive food sensitivity test, as opposed to just the Everlywell food sensitivity kit, um, the, the standard one. Uh, so I did the slightly more expensive one that has like 108 more foods, uh, but they are like, less common foods like things like quail meat to see if you <laughs> have a sensitivity to. Uh, so not everyone's gonna need to do this. I recommend just taking a look at the list of what's in each on their website and uh, deciding for yourself. But for most people, that regular kit will probably be enough. If you're like me and you wanna be a little bit more thorough and really just rule out anything bizarre that you might have a sensitivity to, uh, then it might be worth going for that comprehensive test. But I digress, let's dive in and take a look at the results. So as you can see, um, I got my results on this particular uh, test about three days, I wanna say. I think I filmed this on the, I filmed the first half of the video on the 14th and I, I think I also mailed in the test results on that day. So about three days or so is what it took me to get the results which they emailed me, um, which I was very happy with. I found that to be pretty quick. Uh, I did take the food sensitivity comprehensive test by Everlywell as opposed to just the regular Everlywell food sensitivity test. So this test did have about 108 more foods than the standard test. Uh, so I mean, you can take a look yourself at those two different tests and see which one is more worth it for you. Uh, but mine did show an IgG reactivity above normal to 26 of those foods. I don't think that's that much. but. What do I know? Uh, it's, it seems pretty good, I think. Uh, so we can group these sensitivities, these different food sensitivities by reactivity or by food. So we can look at which things we reacted the most to, or we can look at which groups, uh, maybe we can look at the patterns that they showed. Uh, so for now, let's just make this easy and group by reactivity. I didn't show high reactivity to any foods, which is awesome because that means that there's nothing that I urgently probably need to cut out of my diet but I did show a moderate reactivity to one food, uh, which was cow's milk. And I'm actually kind of happy about this result because I, I had predicted it earlier in the video uh, and I would have been a little embarrassed if I was completely off base because that might suggest I don't know my own body that well. Uh, so this is a little bit validating here, uh, as well as my prediction regarding the, what did I say? The wheat or the gluten up here. Uh, like I said, if I have like a big, frozen pizza or something like that, I'll usually just feel a little bit anxious afterward, and that could be why. Just that hidden inflammation in the body, uh, maybe even that carb spike that you get from eating something like that, but I always thought it might have been some food sensitivity, and it looks like I might be on point there. Um, however, there were definitely some things in here that I didn't expect. Uh, actually, we'll dive into that in a second. I just want to point out, with the cow's milk and with the those uh, like wheat and gluten type things, uh, when I was younger and had a ton of anxiety back, say, like in high school, um, I consumed that stuff at, like every day. So it's impossible for me to say whether I was just anxious because anxiety was new to me or if I was anxious because I was eating these things so much. Cow's milk, I'll tell you, I was drinking protein shakes every day uh, or uh, those like instant breakfast mixes uh, that I used to have before school or a protein shake after school, after the gym. And I was drinking that stuff every single day on top of the fact that uh, to get even more cheese and more um, wheat and gluten in, I was eating like a bag of cheese its a day. I don't know, that was my go-to snack back then. And I was just eating a ton of that stuff. And these are all foods that now it's showing me I have a sensitivity to, which might indicate that some of that early anxiety I had when I was in my teenage years could actually be because of how much of that food I was eating. As an adult, I really don't have very much anxiety anymore at all. If some anxiety does come up, I'm usually able to squash it very quickly. And uh, a large reason that might be, I'm sure there's many reasons contributing to that. I've done a lot of work on myself since then, but uh, one contributing factor could be 
the reactivity that I'm having to these foods uh, by just not being aware of the sensitivities I have. So I am glad I cut those things out and some of you guys might be able to benefit from that as well. However, like I said, there were some things in here that I didn't expect, uh, like almonds. I really didn't expect to have any kind of reactivity to almonds, bell peppers, black tea, different kinds of nuts in here, chicken especially, um, egg, garlic. I mean, these are not like crazy reactivities. They're pretty on the mild scale anyway, um, but just interesting to me because I never, uh, some of these things I've never even had. I've actually never eaten shrimp. It kind of grosses me out to be honest. Um, but, uh, it pops up on there. So I won't start having that anytime soon. But as you can see, there are some patterns to this stuff. Um, you know, you see a lot of the egg, a lot of the dairy type, a lot of the grains. So if you guys are looking, you know, if you're trying to change your diet at all to accommodate any of these sensitivities uh, an easier way to do it might be by grouping by food you know I can see okay maybe egg yolk is not that great for me that's not that bad either but whatever dairy I see a lot of activity going on here there's a lot of things with mild reactivity so for convenience sake maybe I should just cut it out entirely uh, that wouldn't be particularly hard for me to do uh, I don't think I would need to be religious about this, but just be a little bit more mindful when I'm shopping. Meat, the only thing that pops up is chicken, which is my favorite type of meat, unfortunately, but maybe I can start steering towards turkey a little bit, although it's not that big of a difference in reactivity, so I probably won't do anything about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, but the same thing goes for like garlic and almonds, like I love that stuff. Um, so personally, with a mild reactivity and me noticing no reaction from it, that's not, probably not something I'll act on. Um, I'm not going to cut garlic out of my diet or chicken at this time. So I don't want you guys to stress too much if you have a mild reactivity to something. This is only something that going forward, you might want to plan an elimination diet. That means choosing a food or two that you're cutting out of your diet, uh, going a couple of weeks without it, and then slowly reintroducing it back into your diet and seeing if you notice any kind of adverse effects that might justify eliminating it from your diet long term. Um, Let's see. Yeah, grains. I don't know. I got some activity with grains. I, man, I don't know what brewer's yeast is or buckwheat or malt or millet. I, I, I don't know about all that stuff. So to make it simple, I'll just try to avoid grains and go for rice instead. Uh, like I said, I don't really think that there's a big deal here. But even if I can make myself feel a couple of percent better, a little bit healthier, uh, nourish my body a little more effectively, I think it's worth it. Uh, not really much reactivity to the vegetables or to the fruits here. Uh, seafood, not a lot going on. Spice, got a couple of things in there, but nothing much. Of course, my favorite garlic is in there. Um, some seeds and nuts, there's some activity, but like I said, I've never noticed anything from these things, so I don't think I have an immediate effect. It might be worthwhile experimenting a little bit, uh, but since it is such a mild reactivity i'm not really too worried about it that's up to you guys if you are feeling routinely not great uh anxious or irritable or just your, your stomach doesn't feel right anything like that you might want to plan an elimination diet even for something with a mild reactivity because you might wind up finding that cutting something out you know if i cut out pine nuts for example maybe that would be beneficial for me i don't think so so i'm probably going to ignore that but like i said this will probably alter some of my shopping habits going forward when I am doing grocery shopping. I'll probably definitely steer away from dairy and probably lean a little bit more away from grain and try to opt for things like vegetable sides instead or rice, stuff like that. Uh, but you guys, you can do this however you want to do it. Was the Everly Well food sensitivity test worth it or not? Um, now, in my experience, I actually think that it was worth it. This is because it helped to validate a bunch of things that I kind of thought I knew about my body, but now I know that I was right for sure. Um, and if I were even younger, uh, back in earlier years, this information could have actually helped me a lot. Uh, back when I said I was drinking milk every day, when I was having high wheat and gluten products every day, uh, and didn't realize the sensitivities that I was having to these things, uh, this definitely could have contributed to my anxiety levels and my stress levels overall and just not been totally ideal for me. So if there's a lot going on uh, with your body or with your mental health and you don't really know what the causes are, uh, 
Sometimes it can be good just to explore topics like this a little bit and try and figure out what type of food you should eliminate using a food elimination diet uh, to see if eliminating any of those things actually makes you feel better. And this is a good first step for a lot of people to take, I think. I'm always an advocate of people being able to put their health in their own hands. Uh, and I think that these kits are a really cool way to do that. As a thank you to all of you guys who stuck through to the end of this video, I'm gonna throw up a link now where you can purchase the Everly Well Food Sensitivity Kit at a discount that I worked out with the manufacturer. Um, if you plan on purchasing this kit, please use that link because not only is it gonna make the product cheaper for you, it's also gonna provide me with a little bit of a kickback uh, at no additional cost to you through that affiliate link. So I always appreciate that because it helps me to create more great content for you guys. So if this video was helpful to you and you wanna see more like it, uh, purchasing through that link will help me to continue to do so. So I really do appreciate it. As always guys, thank you so much for sticking through to the end of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or share with a friend if it was helpful. And comment below, let us know what your results were, or if you've had any done any elimination diets in the past that have helped you relieve some symptoms like anxiety, etc. I wanna hear about it. Thank you guys so much, I will catch you next time.